I interviewed uh, Moses Sumanth Kumar Janalagada. He is from uh, India. I learned a lot uh, from my conversation with him, which lasted a, a couple of hours. Um, I learned about his family structure and that it is uh, patriarchal. Uh, typically in India, the mother has some sort of influence over the father, uh, but is seen by the outside as the husband is the head of the family. Uh, the children in India are typically closer to their mom, um, and once when they become teenagers, they um, can sometimes turn rebellious or leave their family. Um, and typically the families are very close-knit and they're very honor-driven and respect-driven. Um, so their grandparents will usually live with their family, um, as well as like their extended family. Um, and uh, they'll all like live together, but if they'll, they'll all be from the same caste as well. Um, and um, in the economics, which we, we talked about, uh, caste is the key to uh, how everything works in India. The caste system works, uh, there's typically five castes. Uh, the Brahmins, which are the priests, are the first caste. The Chetliyas, which are the warriors, are the second caste. The Wishes, which are the third class, or caste, are the business class. The Shudras, which are the fourth caste, are the laborers. And the fifth class is the untouchables. Um, each caste also has a subcaste, but these are the primary castes. Um, and so the priests are usually the head, usually they have more uh, respect and uh, more wealth as well. Um, and the untouchables are uh, seen as the dust that their gods walked upon. They, um, they view untouchables in a very uh, low way. Um, in India, the lower, the lower caste system is similar to uh, racism in America. Um, he compared uh, how the lower caste reacts with the higher castes as um, how racism works in America. Um, so like right now, the lower castes are trying to trying to uh, say that they're not being treated fairly. Um, everything in, in India is also controlled by the government. The government is uh, democratic. Um, and typically leaders are chosen off of their caste, and each city generally has a caste because um, the highest caste of the population in the city uh, vote for their own caste, generally. Um, there are no guns in India, which I learned about, and there is also free speech, however. Um, there's uh, also monogamy is popular in India, which kind of surprised me a little bit, and polygamy is actually shunned as a taboo. Um, other taboos in India are homosexuality, uh, having more than one wife, polygamy, uh, women working in businesses, um, switching religions, and doing witchcraft. Indians are typically very hospitable to foreigners. Um, and they love uh, Asians because they're in close proximity and they enjoy Asian food, as do I. Um, uh, their religious system is uh, based off of Hinduism primarily. There are Muslims that live in India, but uh, Hinduism is the primary religion there. And uh, there are over 30 million gods in the Hindu religion. Um, the first one is the creator god, uh, Brahma. The second god is the destroyer god, Shiva, and the third god is the sustainer god, Vishnu. Um, these are the three head gods, but there are obviously minor gods throughout everything. Um, and they believe that the creator god creates, and then the second god destroys the creation, and the third god sustains the creation to keep it going. And they typically have lots of festivals and rituals and shrines uh, for these gods. Um, they want to achieve moksha, which is uh, their end of the reincarnation status, and they hope to be reincarnated as humans rather than as flies or trees in the next life. Um, there's obviously lots of uh, animism in Hinduism. Um, cows are highly respected, which I was I knew that they respected that, but I didn't know how seriously they took it. Killing a cow is one of the biggest taboos in India, and if you kill a cow, they will probably 
kill you. Um, so um, lynching people happens a lot if people from different castes get married, um, and that's considered honor killing. Education is also key in India. Um, they highly value education and they want to make sure that they're uh, well educated. Um, also, the police are ruled by the government in, in India, so it's very corrupt. Even hospitals are ruled by the government in India, and they're typically very dirty, um, not very clean or sanitary, so usually the doctors will have um, their own clinic so that they can bring in more people and uh, have a more sanitary space and better business as well. Um, the firstborn son also gets the inheritance in the Indian family, especially if the father dies. And uh, daughters usually do not uh, get an inheritance because the Indians marry based off of the dowry system, which uh, requires the parents to pay the husband of their daughter uh, gold and a possession, such as uh, $15,000 and maybe a house or a car. Um, so in conclusion, I learned a lot about India. I learned what I didn't know before is that uh, they have uh, like uh, writings that are sacred to them, such as the Mahabharat, the Ramayan, uh, which are two epics, and then the four Vedas, which teach how their life should be in the manner of it, and the minor Upanishads, uh, which are smaller books, and mainly the bah 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 Bhagavad Gita, which is their main text that they have, and also one of the biggest aspects of India that I didn't know before is that the trees, animals, and basically anything that's not a human that they worship are not actually Indian gods, they are merely vessels for their gods. So they don't worship the cow, but they believe that their god is inside of the cow. Mainly their five, five main gods could be inside of something, and they will worship it. So if the cow dies, their god didn't die, really just a vessel for their god died. Um, so in light of that, uh, hopefully we can share the gospel with people from India and people who believe Hinduism uh, in a better light. That's it.